Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be utilizing this broken iPod Classic 5th generation with a dead hard drive and battery, which I acquired in a previous tech lot video. I will be transforming it into a custom iPod loaded with a 256 gig SSD and a huge 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is significantly larger than what originally shipped in any iPod. The first thing I'll need to do is open up the iPod, which is a little bit more difficult than other tech gadgets. This one has never been opened before, so it actually took a little bit of prying to get it open. I used a range of different plastic picks and tools to be able to wedge my way in between the front faceplate and the back of the iPod. Now it uses really strong clips along the sides and one up the top. Trying not to bend or break any of the metal and plastic, after a good 15 minutes or so, I was able to create a gap between the two. You can see I've actually bent one of the clips on the side of the iPod, however that's a pretty easy fix that I can do later on with a pair of really strong tweezers. Once I've pried off the back, you need to be careful of the two cables that are underneath. I'll need to disconnect the battery which will allow me to fold across the back housing but you can see it's still attached with another ribbon cable. I'm going to remove that dead broken old mechanical hard drive and get that out of the way. Now there's a couple of options you can do when replacing a hard drive. You can replace it with another hard drive, a compact flash card or SD card or you can go all the way out and throw in an SSD. Now these are MSATA SSD drives which are commonly found in some smaller laptops. Now there is a variety of different adapters that you can buy. I started out with a cheap little adapter that I picked up for just over $6. That flat out didn't work and wasn't detecting the SSD and the iPod so I sprung out and got this one from a company called iFlash. Now this set me back $50 US which with postage and exchange rates was about 75 Australian dollars so definitely not a cheap option but considering I just purchased the SSD I wanted this to be reliable and to work well so I picked up this not sponsored or anything but I just think that the product itself is made quite well it fits perfectly inside the iPod which that $6 adapter did not. Now I had a little bit of trouble connecting up the flex cable so I found that removing it from the iPod first which allowed me to easily attach it to the iFlash card. Once that was installed, it was time to get this 3000 milliamp hour battery in here, and you can see just how big it is. In fact, it doesn't go where the old battery sits as it is significantly larger. This also means I'm going to need to make room for it for when we put the device back together. Plugging it in and testing it out, you can see that it says connect to your computer and use iTunes to restore. This is exactly the screen we want to see, seeing as we've put a fresh disk inside of this iPod. Now I just plug this into iTunes and restored the firmware and the iPod is up and running. You can see the display also has some dead pixels so I'm going to need to replace that as well but you can see in the about section that it's detected the 256 gig SSD. Pairing the device back down I can disconnect that 3000 milliamp hour battery and get that out of the way. Now I'm going to disassemble the rest of the iPod so I can access the LCD as well as change its faceplate to a custom clear plastic one. Once you've removed the back panel of an iPod, the rest of the internals are quite modular and easy to repair. And that is definitely something that can't be said about the iPod Touch. The iPod Classic offers many upgrade options with its storage easily replaceable, its battery upgradable and can even have custom parts on the front and back to customise the exterior look of the device. Now I'm a big fan of custom devices so I thought it's about time I customised one of these old iPod Classics given this is one of the best tech devices that were around in the early 2000s. Now I've removed the faulty LCD display and I can then prep everything to go into the new transparent housing. I'll install a new display which I purchased for around $20 off of AliExpress. I'm guessing it is off a used iPod, however I cannot confirm that. I'll need to remove the protective film off of the new faceplate and remove all of the adhesive that was left behind from that protective film as a lot of it was left behind. If I fail to clean this properly before installing everything, there'll be specks of dust and adhesive between the two halves and it wouldn't look as good. After I had roughly installed the new faceplate, I made sure that no specks of dirt or dust were underneath the display and then it was time to just reassemble the device by first installing the six screws around the side, 
plugging in the LCD panel, and now we can start to figure out what we're going to do with that huge 3000 milliamp hour battery. As you can see, the old battery was located at the top of the device, but the problem is the new 3000 milliamp hour battery is absolutely huge in size and capacity, so it doesn't fit in the old spot. So I'm going to need to do some modifications to the device to make this battery fit. Now at first I just installed it at the bottom because I thought this would be the best spot and leave the top of the iPod blank. Making sure to plug in the one cable that links the two halves together, I could then reinstall the flash adapter with the new SSD drive installed on it. Once everything was seated into place, I can then test fit everything to make sure this is going to work when I close it up. Now I also noticed that the battery cable was located on the wrong side, which means that you have to bend the cable around to make everything fit. Now when I went to reassemble it, I noticed that the dock connector was interfering with the top portion of the battery. So I needed to figure out a way to put the battery higher up in the iPod. So removing the battery and the adhesive securing it in place, it's time to remove this foam piece up near the headphone jack. Once I remove that piece of foam, the battery will sit higher in the device and allow for the room at the bottom for the 30 pin dock connection. I installed a fresh new piece of adhesive to make sure that battery wasn't going to fall out and rattle around inside the device. Pressing it up as far as I can, I can push it down and seat it into place. From looking at the cell, it appears that it's made by LG, although I cannot actually confirm that. Now that it's installed, it's time to attach the connection to the logic board of the iPod pressing it and securing it down into place. All that's left to do now is to press the iPod back down into place. Pairing it back up, you can see that it's now ready to be set up. I can select English for the main language and our iPod is ready to sync and ready to go. Finally, I can remove the plastic film on top and we're done. So this is it, a custom looking fully loaded iPod classic. With everyday use, I was able to get 10 days of battery life out of this iPod, and that's with many hours of use each day over those 10 days. So it's fair to say this iPod has a Nokia style battery life. The M SATA SSD provides quick access times when skipping songs, unlike the hard drive, which was required to spin up often. The SSD can also be used to store files, although it's limited by the iPod's ZIF interface, with about 15 megabytes per second write, and 17 megabytes per second read, which to be honest is not a very good speed. The SSD however provides a durability increase over the mechanical hard drive which shipped in these iPods. And with all the parts and work put in, this iPod set me back $171.15. While not the cheapest of upgrades, I've always wanted to make an awesome iPod classic, as it is one of my all time favorite Apple devices. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. Also make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.